Word Up YouTube. So this is just a video for anyone who finds themselves in a position that I was in and that was looking to get a new Mac. They've still got the old iMacs, which as you probably know, have got the lovely 5K Retina displays. But unfortunately, the Mac Studio and the Mac Minis, they won't plug directly into them. So we're stuck there with this lovely screen which we can't upgrade to the new Mac silicone. If you saw my previous videos, I shared with you the issues that I found when setting up the Mac Studio for the first time, and that was doing it with a non-Apple screen. Now, I did manage to get it sorted and did get it set up, although it wasn't the ideal situation. I had to bring my studio to and from the TV, and I was using a HDMI port and a small Asus travel monitor. I did get it working, but I needed a better solution. And this is where Lunar Display comes into it. So I bought the Lunar Display now and I'll share with you how I went about setting that up and some of the issues I found along the way when doing that. By the end of the video, I'll let you know whether I think it's worth purchasing or not. So with that being said, let's get into it. So we're back. We've got the Mac Studio on the television and also on the little Asus Mini. I've just plugged in my Luna device into here and I've downloaded the app for the primary device. So I need to drag that now into the applications. There it is. Next, it's telling me to download the secondary app on my second screen, which will be my 2017 iMac. So I'll go and do that now. So here we are at the desk. Much better, I've got my good mouse plugged in, I've got my nice lovely big screen, and I sat at my chair. So, step two, get the secondary app. So we're on a Mac, here it comes. Let's open this up, put it into secondary. Okay, and there it is. So what do we do now? I'm gonna guess we just launch them both. But it now says, after asking me a couple of questions, I wanna run it in headless mode, apparently. And it says, headless mode allows you to turn your iPad or secondary Mac into the primary display for a Mac mini or Mac studio. Get started with our headless mode setup guide. Okay, I'm gonna read this and come back. So it says here, I can't, I don't know if you've seen my last video, but it, it says by setting an automatic login and disabling the file vault and adding Luna to the login items, the Luna software will run at the startup and connect to your iPad or secondary Mac computer. Now I was trying to run it with an ASUS MB166B. Every time I unplugged it, it, would, it wouldn't it would restart automatically. So I wonder if it's because I had the file vault turned on and that I need to turn it off to make that work. But there you go. So I'm going to carry on reading this. I've installed Lunar Display on here and it's asking me to go into setup. And I've also installed Lunar Display over here and it says ready to become a display. Let's try that. So it's asked me some questions that I've enabled it for screen recording and for control of the computer. And now it's just open updating the firmware. Right, so I think it's worked. I think it is now, this is my 2017 Apple iMac. Let's go to about this Mac. And it says, oh look, it's a Mac Studio, but it's not, it's a 2017 iMac. Oh, that's good, that works. Now I just need to work out if it'll turn off and on again without having to go through all this again. So I'm gonna try that and then I will let you know if that's worked or not. So after a bit of jiggery pokery, I think I've got it sorted. So here I have the Lunar Display app loaded on the 2017, and I've got the dongle plugged into the back of the studio. Let's fire her up, let's see what happens. Okay, so I've heard the noise after about 20 seconds. There we go, and that's it, brilliant. So I can confirm that works. It looks, the screen looks a bit bitty, but pixelated. I think just give it a minute for it to start up. And what I've done is I've actually plugged in the data cable. So that's going to need some more setting up because I've read online that actually Wi-Fi connection isn't stable and this is connected through Wi-Fi. So at least it works. I know it works. Now I need to do a bit more jiggery pokery to get the ethernet cable working. One thing I have noticed though, is that actually, and this is a great, this is great, is that my Bluetooth mouse, which is connected to the 2017, is what's controlling the mouse on the studio. And also my Apple keyboard here, which is a wired one, a USB, plugged into the iMac 2017, which is still plugged into the iMac, so that's great. That'll free up some ports on the studio down here. So 
I'm going to have a little play about and see if we can get it going through this Ethernet cable for a better connection. Now, are we connected with Ethernet or are we connected via Wi-Fi? This is the question. I think we're connected in Wi-Fi still. So I'm still trying to work out how to set up Ethernet. Um, so as you can see, I can now use my old Max display with my new Max Studio. So I'm more than happy with that. That's brilliant. There were a few issues along the way, mainly around getting it to recognize the Ethernet connection. It was for some reason, it would always go across uh, the Wi-Fi networks in peer to peer. But once I managed to actually sort out the Ethernet connection, the Mac, it, it, it worked a lot better. Over the wireless connection, when you were watching videos, it was stuttery. And when you were trying to edit videos, it, it, it was unworkable over the wireless connection. However, once I sorted out the Ethernet connection, it vastly improved the capabilities of the display. So if you do get one of these, definitely do it over the wired connection. It is not perfect, but it is workable. So if, if you do have any problems getting your Ethernet or your Thunderbolt connections set up, let me know down below and I'll do another video on how I did that. So was it worth it? I'd say absolutely, yes, it was worth it. If you think of the fact that a new Mac Studio display, it's gonna cost you around 1500 pounds. And if you want another monitor that's anywhere near as capable as your 5K Retina display, you're looking at above 500 pounds easily. So Luna display is a great way to breathe life into your, it's, it's not even old equipment, it's 2017, but it's a great way to not have to resign your old Mac to the garbage heap of history. No, you can keep that lovely screen and you can still get your new Mac silicone power. So yes, I think it is worth it. It's not perfect. Like I said, there is drawbacks with the video display, but it works. And at £60, it's a bargain. If you are someone who's in the position like me, who's looking to upgrade to a newer Mac, and that can be a MacBook Pro, the Mac Studio, or, or Mac Mini, this is definitely a good solution to keep your old screens and use them. Anyway, since filming this video, I've actually come up with another solution for using the old Mac screens. And I think that actually when using Luna Display, this is where it really comes into its own. I'll share with you in my next video and I'll put a link at the end, exactly what it was that I did, how I breathed new leases of life into these old screens utilizing the new Mac silicone. So if this video has been of use to you, please press the like button. Or if you want, you can subscribe because I am going to be releasing more videos, more content for you. I'm going to try and release a video once a week. But in the meantime, look, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. So peace, take care.